Nice. <laughs> hey, Kaiser here at the Georgia Gravel Grinduro Gravel Race up in Helen, Georgia. I chose to ride the 68 mile 6500 feet route. Out of the 68 miles, about 60% was rough gravel, hills over 20% grade, and some violent dogs. <laughs> Additionally, my bike broke into pieces oh. during the race. <laughs> However, I was able to see some beautiful fall colors up in the mountains. Now this race started in a town called Helen, where the quote-unquote famous three-gap and six-gap road climbing routes are nearby. This town is a bit weird with its German-style buildings. It is for some reason a tourist spot with tons of people throughout the year, especially in the summer months with tons of people coming to tube in the river. However, in the fall and winter months, it's cold. It's at a higher elevation than Atlanta for sure. The race organizers actually emailed us a few days back saying, This is the warmest day ever. But in the morning, it was a solid 36 degrees. Not warm. Although it was only in the morning that was brutally cold, it definitely was going to get warmer later in the day, which actually made it harder for people to choose their clothing setup. There actually are two more routes that were shorter, a 25 mile 1600 feet up and a 40 mile 3200 feet up route. The route that I chose had three time segments and three aid stations. Anyways, let's get this race started. The beginning definitely had tons of people and was quite crowded. Super exciting for sure. Now sit back and enjoy a beautiful American foliage gravel ride. Starting off with the first long gravel uphill section, I personally like uphills and climbing so no issue for me. The gravel at this point was pretty smooth and hard packed which made it quite enjoyable to ride on. My bike felt spectacular for today. How it rolled and how it shifted felt so so nice. I could really ride fast and aggressively on the gravel while still feeling stable and safe. At least in the beginning, you know. Compared to all the other riders, I was definitely riding with more gear on me. I'm not here to race so I don't really mind that, especially on a gravel ride you just never know what could happen. Also on the race website it definitely said the 60 mile route must carry a first aid kit so I brought a few things. I know for sure that these other racers were definitely not carrying one. Wow. <laughs> But anyways, the scenery was already one to remember from the get-go of this ride. Wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> Shocks it. Hey, <laughs> stay warm. Soon enough, the first time segment begins. At the beginning, I was keeping my consistent party pace until this one guy blew past me and I didn't appreciate that. And so I chase and chase and get right behind him and film with one hand while he constantly tried to drop me. Thanks for being out here. Onwards. Ooh, we've got quite a climb. From here was a long hill up this beautiful paved road. It had a nice and easy 5% or so average grade and it was perfect to enjoy all the fall colors around me. 
I was definitely smiling the whole entire time, repeatedly saying, wow, and it's so pretty. The quality of this segment was so high that when I realized the climb was already over. Now enjoy a beautiful foliage oh. downhill. What suddenly appeared was a 25% gravel wall. It was super slippery because of all the loose gravel and I had to really get my upper body close to the bike and power up this hill. Choosing the right line was definitely important, but I really don't think there was an obvious good line for me. So. After the descent just now is where the route splits based on the distances. If you ride the longest route, you go left. Everyone else goes right. Turned out everyone around me was riding the shorter distances. This led to me suddenly becoming very alone. A sudden quietness around me. I felt a bit of secludedness and a fear of being alone. I just started having a bad feeling for some reason. But I'm on a bike ride and there's no point in wondering why I might feel bad. So onwards we go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> So that was definitely a dog that destroys any sort of pacing and stable heart rate. The dog definitely scared the soul out of my body and also every ounce of energy out of my legs. A 150% all out sprint up a 15% gravel climb while my rear tire slips all over the place. The worst part about experiencing these things is how it affects my mindset for the entire rest of the ride. I had to ride in fear for all the remaining miles whenever I'm by houses. From here, I was genuinely scared riding alone. I usually try not to ride the countryside gravel all alone, especially being Asian, not gonna lie. It's just the vibe and fear of being a different race in the United States. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality of living here. And that's precisely why I pay money to ride these roads during an event. However, finding people who really match my faster paced party pace is difficult, and I very often find myself riding alone. That dog. That one dog just like destroyed everything. All oh, pacing. Keep going about there, ne? Kitsui, ne? Amai kibashi dekita ga. Hitari da to kitsui na. Now on to the second time section. This was such a long section, blasting about 12 miles and climbing over 2400 feet during the segment. I didn't know that it was supposed to be so long, so it definitely felt like it went on forever. The beginning was this long stretch along the river and I was really feeling this deja vu feeling the whole time since the same sort of turns and hills repeated over and over and over. 
After repeating it multiple times, I kind of lost concentration a little bit and started daydreaming a little. これは本当にやばいやつだな。どうしよう。本格的にマジでやばいやつだな。はい、リ。ありがとうございます。いや、thanks <笑> For an excuse to, to upgrade uh, drive trains. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Oh. Jesus. Yes. Tega mo mak. <laughs> I was passed by around 20 people while I was fixing my bike, but thanks to that I was able to relax a little bit knowing that there were people still around me. As long as I pass a few people from here on out, I'll know for certain that someone will come by if my bike were to break down completely again. However, now I had to worry about both dogs and my bike, which is just lovely. I got really nervous on every washboardy road since I could hear my chain jumping around and that's just not great when you're riding gravel because it's washboard everywhere. But for the time being, I was awarded this wonderfully paved road snaking around some beautiful areas. この辺の家っていくらくらいなんだろうね。すげえな。今45キロ。1000アップくらい。まあ、まだね。風エグ。風強いで。いい。ありがとう。Beautiful. Hey, thanks for being there. <laughs> oh, you brought the driver. Kide. Anyways, after avoiding those dogs, who were the same size as me, what confronted me was today's second large mountain to climb. It was a gravel climb in the forest where all you could hear was leaves falling and my tires crunching the gravel below me. Is this heaven? Did I actually die from a dog today and I'm in another place? That's what it felt like climbing this beautiful hill. <laughs> まったく景色がない。登り切った。よう。うわ。<笑> 
Descent. I did not expect something that good, holy moly. At this point I had no idea where the next aid station was, my mileage on the Wahoo couldn't be 100% accurate so I was left wondering whether it's just up the hill or I've still got a couple miles to go. If this was my solo ride then I'd just go ahead and take a small breather but if there's actual aid stations then that just doesn't make much sense. This hill was really wide, the gravel was decently hard packed allowing me to look around and really enjoy the foliage and nature around me. Hey guys, thanks for helping over here. What we now arrive at is a gravel hill that a sedan most definitely shouldn't be driving on in my opinion. It was wide but had a really steep hill and lots of switchbacks. I really, really enjoyed this one. At least until I started getting closer to the top and I hear a dog. There definitely is not a fence. And so I unwillingly start to increase my speed to blast through this section. Luckily the dog didn't chase me down like a small sheep, but so much stress. Having to worry so much just from dogs barking just isn't a fun experience, but that's the American gravel experience. That's the countryside. After a possible scary situation, what awaited us was a beauty. This is around mile 50 and yeah, I'm starting to feel it a little bit. Not as energetic as I was in the morning even on the climbs. Although the sky was definitely better than this morning. Luckily from here I started to see a lot of people giving me a boost of morale. Cool.
was definitely over pacing on the downhills, so I gave up trying to be with them. They were definitely faster when you include all the downhills around here. Oh, Nine miles to Helen. Apparently the third time segment started somewhere, but I had no clue where. I was wondering where it was actually gonna start, but by here I was pretty dang tired, so I must have just zoned out completely. <laughs> Oh, goodness. This is a tough one. Oh, it's <laughs> However, around here, I could really start seeing far in the distance. The view I was expecting but hadn't gotten until here. The view was definitely a game changer for my mood. And by the time I realized the third time segment that started who knows where, ended and I was greeted by amazing people at the aid station. Whoa. The final part of this race ended with a sudden super gnarly and chunky power line trail. The super rough trail definitely was a surprise, but not anything Reed hasn't trained me for. I'm actually really curious as to who the heck routed this race to include this at the very, very, very end. At the end, I finished with the two guys who helped me during my mechanical, so that was actually cool. This race was tougher than normal, but definitely had the nature views that I was hoping for. And maybe a little more trouble than I was hoping for. That's right, Dave. Good ride, man. I need to go lay down. But after the race, my friends who finished 90 minutes earlier greeted me. But you know, ride time was actually identical to them. I just spent 30 minutes repairing my bike in an hour eating and talking to the workers at each aid station. That's how you enjoy a ride, my friends. After the race, I rode around to film the town of Helen and got stuck behind this incredibly slow train. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.